Welcome to the Security Speakeasy Show, where we talk about all things network security. Today, we'll be talking about sandboxing and security. And in this show, we're going to talk about why sandboxing is important as a malware analysis technique and why it's important to have as a tool in your arsenal um, to detect new threats. I'm Fareed Bakari from the product marketing team here at Palo Alto Networks. And joining me today is Michael. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, Fareed. So Michael is a technical marketing engineer for our wildfire security service here at Palo Alto Networks. And Michael, I know you have a wealth of network security, SOC, malware detection experience. Can you tell us what you do here at Palo Alto Networks and how you got into malware analysis? At Palo Alto specifically, uh, I, I work with the product team and articulate you know, technical features and concepts to the sales team. And I directly engage with, with customers uh, to you know, help them better utilize uh, wildfire, understand their use cases, and um, see how they can get the most out of the service. Uh, but before Palo Alto, I've worked at several, uh, several security, uh, cybersecurity companies, uh, really specializing in sandboxing um, for the past 10 years, I would say. So when it comes to sandboxing, can you walk us through what the purpose is of a sandbox, uh, maybe how typical solutions work? Sure. So, so when you look at, you know, when, when you hear the term sandbox, you typically think of an analyst in a, in, a, in a dark room, you know, with a physical piece of hardware that they've uploaded a, a suspicious file to, and they're, they're analyzing it. And pretty much all, I would say, typical sandboxes have some basic features. There's static analysis where you're looking up a hash and comparing it to you know, a, a threat reputation database, or you're 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 looking at the file header and and looking at some of the data tags inside the file. That's all static analysis, and then uh, the file would move into a virtual machine, and all the behaviors and features and functions and code executions that the file does, performs while in that virtual environment is logged and recorded. Right, and that's dynamic analysis, um, and you know, as sandboxing, or I should say as malware has, has evolved, um, you know, most of the solutions are pretty good on what I would say most malware, but, you know, we see more and more anti-evasion uh, based malware out there. And, you know, the newer, you know, more forward looking malware uh, analysis solutions um, have multiple techniques for dealing with anti-evasions. And then when it comes to sandboxing as a security strategy within an organization, you know, why is it so important to employ sandboxing as part of your uh, kind of risk management? Well, I think the short answer is you're looking to stop zero day malware, patient zero or day zero type threats, right? Um, but, you know, the attackers have, have two advantages, you know, speed and, and proliferation, right? They can generate more versions of a piece of malware faster than we can write definition for them, which would be a traditional way of, of doing this. So you have to pull the file out of out of out of band or out of line, and, and drop it into a, a you know and place it in a malware analysis solution where then you can deploy multiple techniques you know static, dynamic, anti evasion detection techniques to fully understand is this is this a malicious file or not and and then provide a verdict back and, and you got to be able to do that at 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 line speed right. And so there are different deployment models for sandboxes. What should folks know about the differences? Right. So I, I think initially I talked about you know the traditional you know physical on-premise you know um, sandbox, and you know and that that works great for you know an analyst who's you know hand you know look, working on four or five manual samples a day. Um, so in, and those definitely can scale up you know quite quite frequently, but you know, that when you're, you know, trying to ingest, you know, thousands of people, thousands of files an hour, you know, that requires a substantial, you know, hard, substantial investment in hardware or, or virtual infrastructure to do. And, and then someone has to maintain that, someone has to, you know, care for it, patch it, maintain it. it it's a lot of work. Um, and you know, I think the more forward looking solutions, say, uh, are, are cloud based. Right, and a cloud-based solution can be stood up within minutes of, of provisioning, and in 
you can start seeing the direct positive impact in preventing malware, you know, in under an hour of deploying a, you know, a cloud-based solution and then, you know, configuring your firewall, your endpoint or, or your, your cloud um, CASB type solutions to, to, to make use of that. And you talked a little bit before about, you know, the, the speed and proliferation of, of today's malware. Uh, you know, what are the leading sandboxing solutions doing to, to keep up with that? So, yeah, I think it has to be cloud-based, right? Because you, you really can't get the compute and I.O. Um, like you can at, at, at a cloud scale. Um, you know, you need multiple points of presence across the globe. You know, data residency and and, and latency is, is a very real issue uh, for a lot for just a lot of people out there, a lot of customers out there. So, having these multiple points of presence in these different geographies, so the data never actually leaves the you know the boundaries of the country, is important. Um, static analysis and machine learning are are areas that we've seen huge amounts of innovation, but when you deploy that in the cloud, you can set up like a self-correcting auto feedback loop on machine learning. And also in the cloud, you're ingesting not only malicious files, but you're also looking at benign files. And, and when you're building a, a proper machine learning um, engine to detect malicious files, you know, it's, you need benign files to balance that across. So having a, a cloud solution that, that's seeing millions of files a day, both malicious and benign, uh, or helps you build better ML engines and helps you you know, deliver verdicts at, at line speed. So I, I really think, you know, cloud is the solution that is more forward looking, you know, uh, to, you know, looking at that next level of, of, you know, where's the next, where's the next big innovation in cybersecurity. And it's not a huge innovation. It's, it's really enabling cloud, uh, cloud-based uh, file analysis. It's, I think it's truly, it's truly a better fit for today's landscape. Yep. And then, you know, speaking of, you know, today's landscape, you know, in the last few months, I know it's something you love to do, but you've been researching some of the high profile attacks and, and how Palo Alto Network Wildfire has been responding. Uh, you know, part of that process, any interesting results uh, that you'd like to share? Yeah, you know, I looked at, um, you know, our, our internal team, Unit 42, did some great work on the Kisei attacks earlier this year. And, and really, and that's a high, been a, a very highly reported on attack. But what I thought was interesting is that at Palo Alto, they, they saw those attacks um, way back in April. And the actual event associated with Kisan or the date associated to that is, is July 2nd. But those payloads were first seen in the wild as, as early as April. And so, you know, April, May, and June, you know, almost three months before the actual massive, you know, date that's, the, that's typically associated to that, that attack, Palo Alto was protecting its customers. And, you know, I, we, we saw almost 642 uh, unique payloads associated to that. And, you know, we're protecting our customers in line. And as they, you know, polymorphize their, their payloads, um, it just made it all the easier for Palo Alto to protect their customers. And you know, for my last question here, um, Michael, you know, as, as we know, you know, organizations, they've been accelerating their digital transformation. Um, pandemic, for sure, helped drive that along. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what this meant for our, um, expanded use cases for malware analysis and, and the sandboxing that Wildfire provides? Yeah, you know, the digital transformations are going on for a while. Uh, but you know, one thing we, we had to do during the pandemic is we had to figure out how to stay in business and, and how to shift and accelerate the digital transformation. So we saw a lot of these e-portals uh, get stood up where customers, uh, mortgage customers could upload documents associated and uh, to their loans. We saw, you know, companies doing this, you know, when I was hired on at Palo Alto, I didn't fill out a job application with a pen walk into an office and hand it to someone, you know, that was all done electronically. Um, so integrating, we're seeing our, you know, broader ecosystem of customers integrating cloud-based sandboxing into these systems um, to protect against a, a threat actor trying to ingest a piece of malware in through uh, any portal where you might be uploading your financial records for a bank. 
yeah, why not try and put a payload uh, inside of a PDF and upload that and see if that works. So customer, our customers are very smart. They're, they're ahead of that. They're integrating um, security at those solutions. And the benefit to doing that is if that's connected to a broader ecosystem like what Palo Alto has, if, if you see something in the portal, the rest of your solutions are protected automatically uh, from that same threat. Well, thanks, Michael. It was great having you on the show. If you want to learn more about the challenges that Palo Alto Network solves, join us for future episodes. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the show, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and visit us at paloaltonetworks.com.